Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in the storeroom. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming to you, you here for, from the storeroom for a very good reason. Um, so anyway, good morning. Um, thought I'd um, bring you guys up to speed on an uh, issue that happened to us this week. Uh, few, well, let me go back a couple of weeks, uh, about a month. We uh, we come into this storeroom and it's uncharacteristically quiet in here. It's not supposed to be this quiet. Um, another thing that's not supposed to be is that red light. Red light's not supposed to be on. This thing normally makes a lot of noise. And what is this thing? Well, it is a Mitsubishi UPS system. So normally this guy makes a whole ton of noise well we come to find out is that that filter down there had degraded over the years because nobody was doing any service on this um, and before you guys yell at me about it I'm I don't do service on this it's not my job to track it um, we've come to find out it's been nobody's job to track this they ordered this and then just left it up and running and um, what is sometimes typical of many organizations it's like well it's not my job it's not my job it's not my job well it really should have been the, uh, the the department administrator should have been tracking this but they weren't so this guy died this guy provides um, backup power to the entire data center, which is right on the other side of this wall. Um, I should say a power supply in the, the, the computer guts of this thing died. Um, and what that's connected to is over here in the data center. Let's walk out of the storeroom. And over here, into the data center. Now I have to start talking louder. So that controller over there is connected to this. It's a battery bank. You should, there's like tons of batteries in there. Uh, I'm not gonna bother opening that up. Trust me, it's tons of batteries. And that provides power for all of this mess. All of our, I've given you a tour before. There's our, our uh, network equipment, our servers. Uh, everything is in there, uh, and including these over here. I don't talk much about these, but these servers are very important. It's our radiology servers, so x-rays, MRIs, it's all stored on that. So, we can tell them that thing's broken, needs to get fixed, needs to get fixed. And management's like, yeah, 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 we know, we know. And they were, they were working on it. Um, but the unthinkable happened. So, we lost power. Now, why don't you have backup power? Well, we do. We have a backup generator. It takes time to start. It doesn't start instantaneously when you lose power. So, right over here on the corner, uh, two life wires touched each other and tripped a, blew a transformer somewhere. And this whole campus went dark. Now, areas that had UPSs, they did their job. They kicked in, the, the devices stayed up online until the campus emergency generators kicked in, got things running. Since we didn't have a UPS in this room, it got very quiet in here. And I was blissfully unaware because I was asleep. And I was not on call. And uh, my good buddy Leo was on call. He's my uh, he's my server counterpart. So he does for the server world what I do here in the network world. So he was on call. He got the call, and uh, he came in. And yeah, sure enough, everything was dark in there. And of course, that at that point, your brain locks up. You can't even think. Panic sets in. He's calling for backup. He called he called me. Well, my phone didn't ring. It was uh, it was on set on silent. I set it on silent every night. 
but uh, I'm going to come out here so I don't have to yell. But anyway, I didn't hear him call. And uh, we'll go back in here to the part that's broken. It's quieter. Eerily quiet. Um, his phone number should have broken through my do not disturb, but it but it didn't. So anyway, I was felt very bad about that. I apologize to him. But he got he took care of business. He got it done. Um, from the from the network side of things, there's really not much to do. You you just need power. Wait when the power comes back on, all the switches will power back up. There, there's no on off button on the switches that that we have here. Um, you plug them in to turn them on. You unplug them to turn them off. So the network all came up no problem. Um, but the servers, <laughs> the servers were a different issue. So they they came up. Um, he found some configuration issues on some of them where the the uh, we have what one two three four about eight Nutanix boxes, and across them we have about two hundred two hundred some odd virtual servers. A lot of those virtual servers came up no problem. A lot of them came up, but did not connect to their virtual NICs for some reason. So I don't I don't set any of those up. I don't know why. Don't ask. I don't know. Um, uh, Leo sets those up. So he, uh, but he took care of business. He got in there. He was checking them all, and yeah, sure enough. So he go, had to go through, and a bunch of them felt to connect the NIC at power on the network interface. Uh, adapter um, so there was that and by the time I woke up which was about five in the morning I saw all the frantic messages from him I felt terrible I got dressed and took off out the door I finally got in here about 5 30 and uh, started helping him recover what was left there were a few systems that were still down and so I helped him with those and uh, pretty much spent the rest of the day um, finding out other things that were down and and needed to be recovered so so that was a fun day and it underscored for our management the importance of getting our UPS fixed um, this one is about 25 years old so they've uh, Mitsubishi I don't think they even I don't know if they make UPS's anymore maybe they do they certainly don't make this model anymore so uh, I know we've already purchased uh, another one and uh, they're going to bring it in. You have to install this, bring it in. So we have to have a uh, planned maintenance window of about 8 to 12 hours um, where they're going to take all this out. They're going to plug new power in and uh, we'll get going. So and then we'll we'll be protected again. So yeah, that's coming up. Now the good news in all of that was that our network design, I'm pointing to the other room now, the, the network design actually worked. So I talk about the MDF frequently and how we have another set of core routers down there, how we have another set of firewalls down there, we have another set of, of uh, Cerner uh, routers down there to get to our Cerner equipment, or our, our Cerner uh, electronic medical records provider that all worked the backup firewall took over the main hospital which did not lose power um, where our patients and doctors and nurses are were able to get to the internet no problem they were able to get to Cerner no problem um, they could not get to radiology they could not get to the uh, it's called PAX the PAX system they couldn't get to that um, but they were able to work around that they could uh, they could still do x-rays, they would just have to, you know, read them locally, you know, look at the images over there locally at radiology, rather than have our remote doctors that are off-site look at them. And uh, it just took, it just takes longer, but it can still be done, they can still work around it. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, that was, that was good news, that, that, that was all, that all stayed up and worked, and so, yeah, so, that that was a fun week and we we also had a couple other little issues that i've been trying to fight um one more issue so that's all that one more issue i'll talk about is the issue of multicasting i am not a multicasting ex expert i know it exists that's about 
my knowledge on it. Um, and I know you have to do certain setups for multicast in your switches. You know, you're going to either use PIM or IGMP or, or whatever. Um, like I said, I, I'm not a multicast guy. I, I don't, I don't know normally how to set all that stuff up. It was all set up in our old switches. When we migrated over to these new ones two plus years ago, uh, the engineer said he was going to set up multicasting and that it would work. We've recently deployed an application that does use multicasting and it doesn't work. So I called the uh, uh, Extremes GTAC and they said, oh yeah, that's not going to work in your setup. So I said, oh, really? So what they told me is, is in our setup we have four, no, I'm sorry, five uh, VRFs, virtual routers in our core. We've got servers, users, VoIP, Wi-Fi, and Internet of Things. And uh, they said, well, you can multicast within a VRF, but you can't multicast across VRFs. So you can't multicast from one VRF to another because it's a different router. And I said, you got to be kidding me. There's got to be a way to do this. And they're like, well, if there is, we don't know. We'll send you some knowledge base articles. And the knowledge base articles they sent me said it can't be done. Okay, great. So, so I called up the uh, the guy that actually designed our network, called up, I emailed him. And uh, we're going to have a meeting on that today. Um, I, I kind of pushed back on uh, the, the support guys, GTAC, they call it. I kind of pushed back on them and said, hey, there, there's got to be a way to do this. Let's escalate this ticket and uh, get it up to engineering and see if they got something. And they did send me something yesterday. They said, well, I guess you could do this and it would work. Uh, so they sent me some commands. So I'm holding off on those. I'm going to run them by the engineer today. And uh, then I'll let you guys know how our multicasting goes and uh, if it works. And I'll let you know what the ultimate solution was. So that's it. That's enough for this week. I mean, other stuff happened. There's issues with Vocera, and I'll, I'll save that for a future video. But uh, things happened this week. I got a four-day weekend coming up with my... I normally don't work Fridays, and Monday is a holiday here in the U.S., uh, Labor Day. So looking forward to having a nice four-day weekend after this uh, stunning uh, failure we had this week with... Uh, <laughs> Well, it wasn't a failure on our part. It was a fa failure on uh, PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric. Um, and it wasn't intentional. It's just something caused those two two lines to short together. So, And nobody seems to know what caused that. Right. Anyway, <laughs> somebody somewhere knows something. That's all I got this week. Uh, everybody keep praying for Sam Jones. He needs it. He says he's... Uh, He's coveting our prayers, so let's cover him in prayers. And he's praying for us as well. Pray for each other. Pray for our nation. Pray for the world. Pray for everybody's nation. Um, have you Honestly, have you guys seen things as bad as they are now? So, this is the time. This is the time to turn to God. So, this is not the time to trust in your own understanding of things. So... If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell if so desired. Thumbs up, thumbs down, either way it's fine. And uh, thanks for all the great comments guys, keep them coming. And uh, thank you so much for the tip. Um, that's not necessary, but I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll catch you guys all later. God bless.